How does a person know if they've got a skin lesion that needs evaluation? Well, I think it's helpful to have an idea of what some of the common benign skin growths are that you might see as you get older. And so we've got a few pictures that we can show. Let's look at the first one. Okay. These are known as cherry angiomas or senile angiomas. And these are very, very common. They can be anywhere from red and flat to a dark purplish color, sometimes raised, but these are hereditary and benign and increase in number with age. Some people come in with oh, three or four hundred of these. And now, angioma uh -huh. means, means what? Just a, gr a benign growth made out of blood vessels. Okay, so mm -hmm. that, that's the color that right. it's there. Is it lumpy bumpy or uh, They can hard? be flat, they can be raised, they're usually soft. Okay, mm -hmm. let's, look at, let's look at another picture okay. of some common lesions. Okay, this is someone's underarm, if you can uh, can tell that. And these are very, very common benign growths called seborrheic keratoses. Now, I, I see that a lot on somebody's back when I examine sure. patients as we get older. Uh, they used to worry me a lot. How, how do you know, what are they like? Well, these are extremely common and also increase in number with age and are more common on the trunk than they are on the extremities, although you certainly can see them there. They're more common on the trunk in the more raised form like this. A lot of times when I see them on the extremities, they're actually flatter. Um, they can happen on the face and scalp as well. They really like the temple area, particularly and in the temporal hairline. So those are the more popular spots where I tend to see these. Should they be taken off? Uh, no, not, not as a matter of course. In fact, uh, since they are benign and have no malignant potential, uh, insurance companies and Medicare and all those folks are really not all that interested in paying to remove them. They, they try to consider that cosmetic. Uh, so they all, sometimes will pay for lesions to be removed if they happen to be in a bad spot where they're prone to being rubbed and irritated. And you know, that in that case, they may make an exception. Let's look at another lesion. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is just more of a close-up of the seborrheic keratosis and some of the classic features here. You're seeing the little whitish areas that are called horn pearls, and those are pr very characteristic of these. Now, that one looks a little bit more scary to me. I would be, uh, you know, if I was just looking, I wasn't a dermatologist and I wasn't familiar with the sure, SK. Sure, absolutely. Well, and I think the next picture is actually perhaps even a little bit of a scarier one. It's actually the very uh, same growth. This is a seborrheic keratosis, and here is the temporal area, as I mentioned on the uh, one side of the screen, you can see the corner of someone's eye, and then here's the hairline. And this actually looks like a very scary one, but it is just strictly that seborrheic keratosis. Some of the things that you can look for that will help you tell the difference is that if you can tell, it's hard on television, of course, uh, but when you're up close to one of these, if you can see the normal skin lines right over the surface of the lesion and you can see the hair follicles and nothing really looks disturbed, that's a great sign that it's benign. Okay. Yeah. Also, that there's no inflammation associated with them. This one, if you look, there's no pinkness surrounding it. There's no sign that there's any irritation, which kind of tells you that the immune system is not that concerned about this one. Malignant lesions will a lot of times have a little erythema or redness surrounding them, and those are indications that the immune system is attacking. Oh, so those are those are good pearls of something being benign. Sure. Uh, let's look at the next picture. These okay. are great. Okay. Uh, and here's a good indication of that. These are precancers or actinic keratosis. These are in the back of someone's hands. Back so of somebody's hands. Right. Their fingers are going down toward the bottom of right. the screen. Right, and this okay. is a very popular spot to see these. Uh, and these are the little red, the slightly scaly growths that you see on the backs of both of these hands. And again, there's the redness as the trigger to notice that there's something wrong there. Um, a lot of times that redness also is uh, associated with some symptoms. You know, these are going to feel a little sensitive, burn, itch, feel a little irritable uh, to the person. And is, that's this a, a, is this a cancer? These here? are actually precancers. These are called actinic keratoses or precancers. And uh, if left untreated, most studies show somewhere between 5 and 20 percent of these will go on to form a squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. Are these direct, re directly related to a lot of sun exposure? This looks like the back of the hands where somebody's been maybe fishing a lot. Absolutely. And these are very, very highly associated with sun. I don't really even see these in locations where there is not sun. Uh, AKs are more common in men than they are in women, but backs of hands, forearms, face, ears, gosh, the top of the ears, 
scalps in certain people. Yes, uh, like uh, people with no <laughs> hair on top of their head. And <laughs> necks uh, are probably the popular spots. How do you get rid of these AKs? Uh, there's a variety of treatments for them. The most commonplace treatment is freezing with liquid nitrogen. You may have heard of having things frozen off, and that's what this is. Or there are topical chemotherapy drugs of a variety of types now, some including some new ones uh, that can be used to get rid of these.